would some Republicans try to shut down the government in order to stop millions of people from getting health care? My goodness, they won't even sit down and have a discussion about this. Watching the news, you'd think that the two parties were fighting about government spending. Democrats want to spend more and give people more stuff. Republicans want to cut to reduce our debt. That's the storyline, but when it comes to specifics, it's often a different story. Matt Welch of Reason Magazine says it's true, Democrats want to spend, but I'm wrong if I think Republicans want to cut. They say they want to cut. Yeah, but they never say what they're going to cut. That is the thing. Since uh, Republican leadership, since George W. Bush, all the way through Mitt Romney, they've been running and campaigning against specific spending cuts, not for specific spending cuts. Compassionate conservatism was all about boosting the Department of Education, creating Medicare Part D, the biggest entitlement since Lyndon Johnson. Mitt Romney never, ever said what he was going to cut. He wouldn't even admit it to... He, he, even in an off-the-record fundraiser, he still said, I can't tell you what. He, uh, he firmly believes, like Karl Rove, like the Republican establishment for a long time now, that if you mention what you're going to cut, then you will lose the election. That's why Mitt Romney thought he lost his first election to Teddy Kennedy. Uh, and so they're terrified. Karl Rove, this January, after the fiscal cliff deal, said, uh, up to the se uh, sequestration that deal, he said, Republicans should only back cuts that Barack Obama has already previously backed himself. That way we could say it's Barack Obama's fault. That is where the Republican leadership has been at for 14 years. Because while a lot of people benefit from cuts, none of them really care about an individual cut, but the person who gets cut will fight you to the death. Yes, which is a specific problem. But also, I think Republicans have lost the feeling that uh, the, the kind of uh, moral argument for making people freer or making all of us more prosperous by getting the government off our backs and by spending less money in Washington. That was a project that Democrats and Republicans were part of in the 1970s and Republicans in the 1980s. But now they feel like if they argue that, they'll lose election. They don't really believe it anymore. John Boehner did give a telling answer when he was asked about cuts. He, he became Speaker of the House because the Tea Party wanted the deficit reduced and voted in Republicans. Brian Williams then asked him this. Do you consider the defense budget sacred? Do you consider Absolutely the department? Absolutely not. Do you consider the Homeland Security budget no. sacred? No. What I, goes? Uh, I, listen. Name a program right now that we could do without. I don't think I have one off the top of my head. <laughs> He's the Speaker of the House. You'd think, I would think he would have it off the top of his head. But look, that was a couple of years ago. We've now elected a Tea Party class. Isn't the new group more hardcore? I think so. Some of the new group is more hardcore. Still, what we're arguing for right now or between is $3.5 trillion and $3.7 trillion. Those are the two budget proposals from the House by the Republicans, the Senate by the Democrats. It's very, very small. And the uh, House Republican thing has nothing about going after the Department of Education or Commerce or anything like that. So you have a minority of Tea Party Republicans who talk about this and win elections and campaign on it, which is important, but it is still a minority. And as I think we've seen this week, they're not really negotiating particularly well. And when you get to the specifics, as you point out, it's not so good. 77 House Republicans voted against killing the essential air service program, the subsidy to tiny airports, mostly used by wealthy people. Uh, Peter King, Steve King, Christy Noem, these people who are on this network often and say their fiscal conservatives voted to continue it. Sure, imagine this. America led the world in airline deregulation in the 1970s, again led by Democrats like Teddy Kennedy. Now Europe is way ahead of us in airline deregulation precisely because of Republicans like that. Uh, the, there was an amendment that would have phased out sugar subsidies. They are awful. They hurt so many people. Help a couple rich sugar growers. 16 Senate Republicans, including Marco Rubio, vote against it. Of course. If Republicans really wanted to make a moral argument against welfare, against the state giving money to people and to distort the market, the first thing that they would target would be agricultural subsidies, subsidies from you and I to Archer Daniels Midland. They won't. Instead, they'll talk about food stamps instead. So they don't like welfare when it goes to poor people. They seem to like it when it goes to rich people. And that's terrible politics and terrible policy. And I would think it is terrible politics because, I mean, when they 
bash food stamps, I, I, I would think they would want to avoid ads like this one. Any politician would want to avoid specific cut because when they do, opponents go after them with sleazy <laughs> ads like this one. I mean, misleading ads. It's uh, the person behind the wheelchair pushing Granny off the cliff was meant to resemble Congressman Ryan. Ryan. Uh, yeah, two things about that. One is that we've got, all of us are being pushed off a fiscal cliff at this point. We have entitlements that are going to run over us like a steamroller. So there are populist arguments against it. But Paul Ryan and the Republicans, I think, made a misstep. They did talk about reforming Medicare and vouchers and all of that, but they didn't make a long series of political arguments about it. They just passed it real quick. If you don't actually make a public argument and try to win a public argument, you are going to get ads like this. You're not going to get informed, deliberative comment. Thank you, Matt Welch. Coming